Well, uh, let's stay in Ukraine. Go to Odessa. Hannah Shalest is uh, director of security programs at the Foreign Policy Council, Ukrainian PRISM. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Oh. Uh, you just heard our correspondent, Gulliver Craig, saying, you know, right now, in times of war, no, no, nowhere feels entirely safe. Your, your thoughts on that? Definitely. You know, I'm out of the sorts of things morning because I have known for more than 15 years the deputy minister. Um, he has been a wonderful uh, diplomat uh, for many years. We worked together. We had similar academic interests. So we interacted all these years. So for me, it's, it's quite a personal. And definitely what you can see today in all discussions that uh, it can be any type of the uh, weather or a mistake of the pilot, but still the main reason is war. Uh, uh, because they've been going to the front line and you know that not only the armed forces of Ukraine are fighting there, but the National Police, the National Guards, the Emergency Service, all of them under the Ministry of Interior. So the Ministry of Interior is also very, very busy with all these uh, developments, with the situation that is happening around the country. And it is a big tragedy, a personal tragedy. Uh, kindergarten is just adding to this uh, because you cannot imagine the feelings of people that is nine o'clock in the morning exactly when parents just brought their kids uh, uh, there and it's quite a small town so uh, uh, that's just all this maximum of emotions that are both uh, because of war and very personal and understanding that we could avoid such things. Could, could avoid such things. Uh, the, the, the mission as Gulliver was saying was en route to, to Kharkiv. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, this again as, as a nation is processing the Russian attack from last week and uh, in the city of Dnipro. Dnipro is something like, you know, each time we think that nothing can surprise us more or make us uh, more shocked. Uh, each of the Russian attacks as under the year, uh, I mean, when it is the civilian area, some residential buildings, it's always a tragedy. But Dnipro probably was one of the biggest uh, and the most emotional of the last uh, months. 50 civilians being killed just on the Saturday day, uh, not even being closer to any critical infrastructure or military object. So when you live near the military base, at least you expect you understand that you are in the risk zone. That uh, uh, district, that neighborhood, that is only a uh, residential building. So uh, all people felt more or less uh, safe over there. And uh, all that demonstrates a lot. On the one hand, it demonstrated the desperate feelings of the Russians, also the type of the missile that they used. It is anti-ship missile. So the missile with the low uh, precision, you understand when you send such missile that you can target wherever it can. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we saw the reaction Action. You definitely, as other media showed, how people from all around the city ran to help. The whole night spent helping there. Uh, all local charts of Dnipro was uh, proposing help or the free staying for people from the building because it is almost 1,000 people were left without uh, uh, their flats. Uh, but the whole Ukraine, people are just gathering money to help all those uh, who've been uh, uh, left either without family member or just without their belongings. And this unit uh, after 11 months of war is just additional demonstration that Russia can send as many as they want missiles, but the unity of people, that's something that they will be uh, just incapable to break. And there is uh, momentum building uh, among NATO allies uh, in support of Ukraine that seems to be, uh, if in fact, uh, growing. Uh, the German chancellor hinted at it in the speech he gave a short while ago at the World Economic Forum in Davos, a big announcement expected on Friday. Uh, Davos, where attendees were also addressed. Let's take a listen to Ukraine's president. Some tanks must outpace another invasion of Russian tanks. The restoration of security and peace in Ukraine must outpace Russia's attacks on security and peace in other countries. A tribunal for military crimes must prevent new ones. The expansion of NATO and the EU must outgo the spread of the Russian aggression. So, uh, Hannah Schelest, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky making an appeal, and according to German uh, media, that appeal has been heard. And on Friday, we're expected to hear that first pledge of leopard uh, tanks. How much will that change? 
Uh, you know, that will be quite an important, but for the zones like eastern Ukraine, so where the close battle is happening, and that's what definitely Ukraine is missing. We don't have sufficient amount of the tanks, and tanks are necessary for going advanced. Uh, you don't need tanks for the proper defense, maybe, but you need tanks uh, for going advanced and liberating the territories, and for the big battles that are happening sometimes uh, there. But that also will be very important emotional, uh, because for so many months, especially the German government been talking that no, 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 tanks will be the escalation and Russians can use these or that type of the weapon. Ukraine always asks, okay, what more escalation, what else you need for the escalation? You already see that Russians are using all types of the weapons. They're mobilized people. They're doing this and this. So uh, if Germany, one of those uh, slow thinkers, let's say, um, in this war, will finally make this decision, it can push other countries that uh, also are producers of weapons, but previously were not allowing the third countries to uh, um, sell us these uh, heavy ammunition, like Switzerland, for example. And it can help Ukraine in general to change the picture, to change the perception of what types of the weapons the international uh, um, community, the, our partners, can or cannot give to us. The, the signs, though, from Moscow is that whatever comes uh, their way, time is on Vladimir Putin's side since he doesn't care about using soldiers as cabin fodder. He uh, doesn't care about waiting it out, and he doesn't care about uh, hitting uh, urban areas. You know, I cannot say that time is absolutely on Mr. Putin's side. On the one hand, yes, you're right. Your arguments are absolutely correct, because buying more time, like asking for the ceasefire, he uh, would like to restore his uh, um, uh, storages of uh, uh, missiles or to train his newly mobilized people. But at the same time, um, it, it's not on his side. One of the reasons is because for this time, Ukraine is building bigger and bigger coalition of countries, not only members of NATO who can support Ukraine, and we see that in Rammstein, there are more than 50 countries already, including Morocco or Japan. Yes, some countries that you couldn't imagine. Uh, at the same time, Russians are really lacking uh, missiles for the big attacks. If previously the big attack was approximately 70, 80 missiles, the last one on Saturday was just 30. That demonstrates that they need more and more time for restoring of their uh, capacities. Plus sanctions, that is the mechanism that is slow but efficient in the long term. So the longer the war is, the more a Russian economy and Russian state are feeling the lack of financing, the problems in economy decrease, and in the free money that they can spend for the war. So that is very tricky to say um, for whom uh, time is better. But for Ukraine, definitely, we just want to finish this war finally uh, to liberate our territory. So we are not going to hesitate in case it is the proper moment and proper capabilities. There's obviously it, it's a ground war and also an information war. Lots of talk about a Russian counteroffensive. Does that seem realistic to you? Uh, if we speak about the big counteroffensive from all sides, I would say no, because more of uh, their movements and trainings that we are observing as for now, they are demonstrating the limited capacities. Of them, some of these actions are more for playing the grounds or playing on our nerves. But at the same time, we definitely can expect um, an attempt of some big assault, for example, in the Parisia region uh, or in the Netsk region. So Mr. Putin really needs some victory. He would like to demonstrate, uh, because since, uh, let's say, spring, he didn't uh, um, capture any big city. He didn't capture any regional centers, administrative centers. And even now, if they take Solidar, Solidar is town of 10,000. For Ukraine, it's like a big village. Uh, if that is the only what the second mighty armed forces in the world uh, can take since July, because the battle started in July, it demonstrates uh, uh, their capacity and capability. That's why he may try in spring to accumulate some forces and to try one big battle somewhere at the southeast. Hannah Shales, many thanks for speaking with us from Odessa.